Hello everyone and welcome today for our webinar entitled, Is Network Performance Haunting Your Productivity? Uh, we still have people that are actually joining the webinar, so we're going to be starting in about 60 seconds. So stay tuned and we'll get started. Again, thank you for joining us today. We'll just be starting in about a minute. We're just waiting for some final people to join the webinar. Thank you for attending today. Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in today. Um, my name is Louise Crawford. I'm the Senior Director of Marketing at Silver Peak. And on behalf of Silver Peak, I'd like to welcome you today to this Halloween themed webinar, Is Network Performance Haunting Your Productivity? Featuring some incredibly knowledgeable industry experts, um, analysts Zeus Caravella and our own VP of Product Marketing, Derek Grenas. Welcome both of you. Uh, just a couple of quick housekeeping items before we get started. On your screen, you'll see some widgets that you can interact with us. There's a Q&A widget that allows you to submit questions at any time throughout the webinar. And we'll plan to address questions at the end of the event. Uh, you can also download relevant documentation in the attachment section. Um, just to let you know, a replay of this webinar will be available in the next 24 hours on our website using the same access URL that you use today. So with that, um, let me hand you over to the speakers and let's get started. Thanks. I appreciate the, uh, the introduction and uh, welcome everybody for joining us on this webinar. Uh, happy Halloween to you all. I'm not sure what, uh, uh, what region you're in, uh, but uh, hope you have a, certainly have a fun Halloween. Um, I, I think this is a fun topic to talk about: is network performance haunting your productivity? Um, you know, certainly we're we're. Um, um, let me just move off the title slide. Um, I just, I'll just give a quick background of myself. I'm um, I've been a research analyst in my own firm now for about five years, a little over five years. I was at the Yankee Group uh, as an analyst there for about ten years, where I ran research, and before that. I actually had an IT background where I was a CIO for a while and was a network engineer. I hold a lot of different technical certifications. And what's interesting about the role of the network is uh, over time, the network has continued to increase in importance um, you know, to the organization. And part of it is just that uh, things are becoming more and more network dependent. If you think of most of the technologies we're deploying in our organization today, um, be it Internet of Things, cloud computing, mobility, whatever, even out to remote workers. These are all things that are network-centric. And so throughout my career, I've slow, watched the slow rise of the network now, and I think the network today really has a big factor on how your application perf applications perform, which has, of course, a big factor on how uh, productive your users are, how happy your customers are, how well students can teach, things like that. So uh, it's a great topic uh, for us to discuss. Now, I'm going to start off talking about this trend in the uh, across the all industries called digital transformation, in which businesses now are trying to move faster than ever before. And, and these are a couple of quotes from a couple of smart guys that were at the World Economic Forum earlier this year in Davos, Switzerland. Yeah, Mark Benioff from Salesforce said, speed is the new currency of business. 
And Dan Schulman, uh, the CEO of PayPal, said that the biggest impediment to a company's future success is its past success, which means business leaders and IT leaders really need to think differently about how their companies run and and um, what happens. And competitive advantage moving forward is really based on an organization's ability to adapt to different changes in the marketplace faster than the competition. So we need to do things faster, and we rely on a number of different technologies to do that. As I mentioned before, cloud, IoT, um, you know, different technologies like that. And I, as I mentioned, they're, they are these are network-centric compute paradigms, and so uh, by definition, the network is going to play in more, a more important role, which is why network performance matters, right? The, for um, digital organizations, they interface with customers today through a variety of different ways. Uh, you know, primarily maybe through a mobile application, um, you know, over the phone, video conferencing, things like that. More and more virtual types of methods. Uh, um, organizations are now playing around with augmented reality, virtual reality, and uh, uh, we're heavily, heavily reliant on the network. In fact, in a lot of cases, you can make the argument that the business, the network is the business, and without a network, you simply aren't able to do the things you need to do. And so, in a world where we're becoming increasingly dynamic and increasingly distributed, poor application performance means unhappy users and uh, unhappy customers, which has an impact on revenue, profitability, customer satisfaction, your brand, right? In fact, one of the interesting data points I have from some of my millennial research is that two-thirds of millennials have already admitted that they've changed providers in the last year based on a poor uh, application experience. And so, um, um, so you know, so certainly you, you don't want to be in that situation. In fact, I'll quantify it a little bit more. Um, and this is from an application performance survey that looked at um, how much is productivity impacted by poor app performance and availability. And the average across all of these is 14%. Um, companies spend literally billions of dollars of technology every year um, uh, on, uh, 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 you know, on trying to improve performance, trying to make people more productive and things like that. Uh, and, um, and if they would just make the, the things that they work, the things that they use today work better, you could argue and you would get a double digit improvement in productivity. So, uh, you know, the, the, again, the network's really important. And frankly, as an organization, you don't really stand a ghost of a chance of becoming digital unless the network the network changes, right? So you need to get all those demons out of the network. Now, legacy WANs um been around a long time. Um, um, uh, you know, and um, these are things uh, uh, that, you know, when you think about the architecture, as I mentioned before, I have an IT background, and um, the architecture used to build WANs today is roughly the same architecture I used when I was in IT 20, you know, 30 years ago. So we really haven't changed things a whole lot um, over the last, oh, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years. We're using the same kind of architecture. Application rollouts are, are limited uh, because ex MPLS connections are expensive. We build networks on this concept of active-passive connectivity. And think about that. Think of how inefficient active-passive connectivity is. If you were a civil engineer and I asked you to design a road system where we could connect, say, um, you know, New York and Boston together, and I told you that you could have as many paths as you want, but only the primary path can be active, and you can only take an alternative route if the primary route fails, you would have to build your roads so big to accommodate all the traffic that it wouldn't be feasible. But yet, that's the norm in networking today, right? Network complexity makes branch upgrades and challenging with very long lead times. In fact, my research shows in a large organization, the average time to implement even simple network changes is four months. Four months. That's not exactly the calling card of a digital organization. And... Um, you know, this, I talked about the static network architectures, right? The, uh, we, we live in a world that's becoming more dynamic. Our networks aren't dynamic, so really you're only as agile as your least agile component, and today that's the network. And bandwidth is used incredibly inefficient, uh, inefficiently uh, today. And so the state of the current WAN is really scary. 
Um, and I think you want to uh, rethink your WAN strategies in this digital era. Now, here's some interesting factoids from my research. Uh, I mentioned the first one already, four months is the average time taken um, for enterprises to provision new services. 90% of IT projects are delivered later canceled, and of course, in the digital world, uh, that can't be the case. 83% uh, of uh, organizations um, um, uh, of organizations budgets are used to keep the lights on, and uh, uh, that's an awfully big number. Uh, if we're going to move forward with uh, digital initiatives, then of course we need more money for strategic initiatives. We need to think about customer experience transformation, worker transformation, things like that. And of course, that can't happen if we're spending all of our money on on, uh, on the legacy. And 12 billion is the amount of money that we spend on um, uh, uh, on uh, infrastructure for private clouds. Uh, actually, this is an error. It should say 2015. Uh, but yet we spend very little money on transforming our WAN. So we're putting more things in the cloud. We're becoming more dependent on the WAN, but yet uh, we're not investing in the WAN to do that. So the current state of the WAN is creating missed business opportunities. Now, SD-WAN, I think, can be that legacy WAN slayer for your organization. Um, uh, you, and uh, it, this is a term that you may or may not be familiar with. Um, uh, and... Um, uh, it's, it's a relatively new concept and uses the principles of software-defined networking that is based on a lot more agility and flexibility. And so from a kind of from a pure definitional standpoint, a software-defined WAN is a WAN that uses software to configure it. But more importantly, it's a centralized control of that software in which I can make configuration change and propagate across my network. Also with an SD-WAN, one of the interesting implications are that it uses – um, more and more broadband for my network connectivity. And um, uh, in this case, uh, it doesn't have to be broadband, right? But I can use a mix of broadband and MPLS. I can send all my, say, important mission critical voice over IP traffic uh, down my MPLS connections or my private IP. And then I could, say, send, uh, um, you know, email or, you know, some other backup traffic down my internet connections. But, uh, and, and my SD WAN provider if I choose the right one, may have direct connections to the cloud themselves. But ultimately what I have here is a network that is much more agile, much more flexible, uses bandwidth more efficiently, and, uh, and is able to uh, allow me to do the things that I need to do in order to move my business forward. So, you know, when you think about the current architectures I mentioned, it was, it was really designed for another era of computing. Um, uh, we're, we're still, you know, and it was great, right? So traditional, the hub and spoke network using MPLS um, was tremendous innovation in its day and allowed us to do connect branch offices and teleworkers and things. And so, uh, you know, the, I don't want to, you know, say it didn't serve a purpose. It did, but the architecture is 20 years old. And so SD-WANs are the right, is the right network for the digital computing era. And I think that's really the important thing to think about is we've evolved our data centers. We've evolved uh, the, what, uh, our applications. We've evolved uh, even things like storage has evolved, but the network hasn't evolved, and so it's, it's time to, to evolve it. Oops, I think I went two slides there at once. Um, now, uh, one of the big benefits to SD-WANs is that it improves application performance. Um, multiple internet connections <clears throat> can be used to carry business critical traffic. And, and this is something that, you know, I, I can't sit here and tell you that if you compare the performance of a single broadband connection to a, the connection uh, to, a, um, uh, uh, to an MPLS connection, obviously the, the MPLS connection is going to perform better. But if I compare an MPLS connection with multiple internet connections and I use the right optimization technology, I bet you're going to get performance that's just as good or, or maybe even better than what you would have got with your uh, traditional MPLS network. So as I mentioned before, it's the right WAN model for network-centric compute initiatives such as cloud, IoT, and mobility. And so think about all those, right? They're very dynamic. They're highly distributed, right? Um, and you need a network that can follow that, right? So one, if I'm with, um, with cloud, if I'm going to have traffic that, you know, kind of gets really bursty at one time, I need a network where I can spin up and spin down bandwidth. I, want, I need one that can optimize a lot more. 
Um, it significantly costs, cuts the cost of running the WAN. And I've seen companies, big international companies, save up to 90% sometimes on the cost of bandwidth when they run, switch to an SD-WAN. And part of the reason is because those big international connections at high speed cost a lot of money. And if I can find a way to leverage the network that's already deployed, that being the Internet, then all of a sudden my cost model goes way down. In fact, if I use the right optimization technologies like uh, WAN acceleration and things like that, in fact, I'm actually sending less bandwidth as well. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm using my network more efficiently. Uh, another benefit is I'm not hairpinning traffic. And what I mean by that is when you think of the traditional hub-and-spoke model, right, I would take traffic, I would have it come in from the Internet, go down a WAN pipe, I'd do something with it, and I'd send it back up the same pipe. And so I'm going up and down my WAN a couple of times where if I just had a direct connection to the Internet, to my cloud, from, the, uh, to, uh, uh, from my branch office, I, in fact, wouldn't have to traverse my WAN at all. So I'm cutting down from two WAN connections to none. And so all of a sudden you see my, my, my network's going to run a lot more efficient, efficiently. Um, uh, it enables bandwidth to use, as I mentioned, that you're more efficiently. App performance is, you know, becomes ghoulishly great. And uh, I think, as I showed you on, with data before, um, that uh, uh, you know that is really a significant key to improving application performance. Uh, one of the benefits of, uh, of uh, SD WANs I didn't mention here is, in general, almost all the SD WAN providers have very good visibility dashboards today too. And there's a kind of this common phrase that you hear all the time that you can't manage what you can't see. Well, how can I go about rethinking my network architecturally if I don't really know what traffic is running across my network? And so from a very first step in SD-WAN, visibility becomes the first step because now I can understand my traffic patterns, I understand what normal is. Uh, it actually allows me to change the way I manage my network as well. So uh, let's say I'm running voice over IP traffic on my network, and with VoIP, there's a term called MOS, mean opinion score, which is a relative score that tells you how good voice is performing. And if it's over four, then it means it's good. You know, and if it's under four, it means you gotta look at something. But let's say over time, because I've got good visibility tools, I notice my MOS score going, say, from 4.5 to 4.4 to 4.3, right? Nobody's calling, picking up the phone and saying, hey, there's problems, right? They're, they're, they're working, everything's fine, but I can predict that a problem is going to occur if I don't change things. So SD-WAN not only improves application performance, but it improves IT performance because IT can now move to more of a predictive management model instead of having to, um, uh, and, and, you know, instead of having uh, you know, to do things reactively. And I think that's a, that's a big difference. And so, uh, you know, instead of having these, uh, you know, scary monsters down in your network operations department, you'll have much happier people uh, because their jobs will be easier. Uh, so this is my last uh, slide, and uh, then I'll turn it over to Silverpeak that will talk specifically about their solution. Uh, SD-WANs, indeed, uh, can be the Van Helsing of network issues. And if you're not familiar with Van Helsing, he was uh, uh, this was a movie about him, actually, where he went and slayed all kinds of different monsters. And uh, the reason I think the analogy is apropos is because an SD-WAN can solve multiple WAN problems with one technology solution. And often I don't advocate trying to kill too many birds with one stone, uh, but in this case, SD-WAN actually does indeed do that, right? So it enables um, high performance uh, through the combining of different WAN transports, broadband, uh, wireless technologies, even if you want traditional MPLLs, right? Multiple WAN connections can, uh, can be used to optimize app performance and resiliency. Uh, one of the big issues is it protects against brownouts, right? And so we're moving into an era, I think, where fault management doesn't uh, – I don't want to say it doesn't matter as much – but frankly, it doesn't matter as much because we build our networks to be so redundant that if we actually had a device fail, um, uh, we'd be protected because it would. Uh, we have a lot of resiliency. But how often is the case as a network manager that you know everything's green on your dashboard, but yet users are calling you and saying there's a problem, and right, and so that's an issue if that's the case, and so it protects against those brownout situations. It fixes distance issues, and so one of the big issues with Networks, if I've got a long pipe uh, over a long distance, um, the TCP protocol has got a lot of problems, right? It's very chatty, things like that. And WAN optimization with the right optimization tools, or sorry, um, uh, SD-WAN with the right optimization tools like acceleration actually cuts down the amount of traffic being sent and makes the whole network perform better. In fact, I've talked to customers that tell me they get LAN-like performance over their WAN 
when the proper optimization technologies is used. And lastly, it delivers business quality networking over broadband. And that's something that you might be raising a skeptical eye, and I don't blame you because it's, we've, it's been promised before and it never really delivered. And again, I think one of the mistakes was that too often we tried to compare a single broadband connection with an MPLS connection. And the, and, um, the real benefit of SD-WAN is I'm able to aggregate multiple connections and use that as a single business connection. And I think, you know, that's really the big difference. And so um, that's the end of my formal presentation. Um, and I'll be back later for some Q&A. But right now I'm going to turn it over, uh, you know, to Derek uh, from uh, Silver Peak, who's going to talk about uh, how, you know, they go about solving these problems. So, Derek. Thank you, Zayas. Thank you very much for that introduction. <clears throat> and uh, what, what, what I will uh, speak about today are, are some of the uh, secret ingredients that Silver Peak has to put into a potion to help you resolve some of these wide area networking challenges. Um, I was at the Open Networking User Group meeting earlier this week, Monday and Tuesday, and it's a, a, a group of folks that, that work on standards and, and talk about technology advances all across software-defined networking, software-defined data centers, et cetera. But the main theme of the, uh, of, of the event was software-defined wide area networking, and, and I think for very, very good reasons, because software-defined networking, software-defined wide area networking is being deployed uh, at an accelerating rate. In fact, Silver Peak has doubled the number of customers in just the last four and a half months that have deployed our SD-WAN solution. And the reason is not only the cost savings, but the application performance enhancements that Zeus characterized so well and, and the reasons for those. So all of the SD-WAN solutions that you'll hear about in the industry talk about the ability to use any of the underlying transport services such as MPLS or broadband or a combination of that or even LTE. <clears throat> Excuse me. They all talk about the ability to do dynamic selection of those transports. They all talk about the ability to centralize the orchestration or management and administration of the software-defined wide area networking. Uh, environment, and they all talk about zero-touch provisioning. And, and that's pretty much table stakes of the SD-WAN. But we believe that Silver Peak has a potion to provide uh, a better SD-WAN, a better WAN in general. And those ingredients encompass uh, several different areas. One is, is on performance. And I'll spend most of the time talking about uh, unique capabilities that Silver Peak provides to significantly improve the performance of, of all of the transport resources that, use it, that you're using or potentially using in an SD-WAN and the fact that that can deliver uh, better application performance, better user productivity, better um, customer satisfaction as, as Zayas characterized. I'll also talk about WAN optimization and how that can play a role. Uh, but there are other components to this, this potion, uh, security capabilities, uh, not only the ability to, to use the Internet securely using encrypted tunnels, but also the ability to extend micro-segmentation from the data center across the WAN. And micro-segmentation is becoming a hot topic in, in networking uh, to provide the security uh, that's required to meet compliance requirements and, and, and other um, uh, corporate uh, objectives in, in the security area. Uh, Zayas also mentioned the ability to see what's going on in the network, and visibility and control is becoming more and more important. The second biggest theme at the Open Networking User Group Forum was around analytics. And I'll share with you some of the visi network visibility, application visibility capabilities or features that, that SD-WANs can support and the analytics that go with that to help you operate your network at, at peak efficiencies. And then finally, the ability to implement an SD-WAN in a very, very flexible manner uh, without having to um, rip and replace an existing WAN infrastructure, but being able to overlay that. Because after all, what software-defined wide area networking is, is a logical overlay on top of the underlying transport um, resources. Yeah, actually, I want to just make a couple of comments on this. The security one's interesting because you're right, micro-segmentation and segmentation has been red hot of late. And one of the reasons why, is, is, as I mentioned in, um, uh, during my presentation, is you're only as agile as your least agile component. And, if, boy, if you think the network's not agile, security's not. <laughs> and segmentation allows companies to uh, really almost automate the uh, creation of secure zones Right, based on business policy, and I think it's a it's a new way to you know it's, it's much more agile than trying to use internal firewalls and uh, you know things like that. And so we'll see that rise. And the analytics are important as well because you want to be able to understand how things change as you move forward in time. And 
as I said, uh, you know, my presentation, the, the things change in this digital world. Things change fast, and so you need to have the right to kind of dashboard into that uh, to be able to look through the network with that lens. Fantastic. Thank you, Zayas. So now, so now let's let's look at the Silver Peak Superhero and see how the Silver Peak Superhero can help you use broadband without fear of having to fall back on MPLS. Some of the SD-WAN solutions in the marketplace today simply make a selection of the path based on the path that's performing the best, but maybe not making use of all of the available paths that are in the WAN infrastructure. And so what I'll talk about are several technologies that allow us to use all of the bandwidth and to do it in a very intelligent manner. So I'll talk about application-specific virtual WAN overlays. I'll talk about logical tunnel bonding, some of the path conditioning or error correction and, pa and packet order correction uh, technologies that Silver Peak has developed over the years, so a little bit about traffic shaping, and then uh, talk again about WAN optimization. There, there is a misconception that um, SD-WANs and the ability to use high-speed broadband that's readily available at relatively low cost eliminates the need for WAN optimization. That's simply not true, and we will uh, look at that uh, again in a little bit more detail. <clears throat> So as I mentioned, um, SD-WAN in general is an overlay technology that allows you to overlay applications or overlay uh, the way you're going to handle applications across the underlying uh, transport services. And the way Silverpeak does this is by centrally defining several different overlays that have potentially different logical topologies. Uh, perhaps some overlays are full mesh, for example, for VoIP and video, uh, where you need every branch to be able to communicate with every other branch as well as the headquarters. And other logical overlays where it may be a hub and spoke, um, like we talked about earlier with uh, typical MPLS, um, where I'm supporting a, an enterprise application that's, that's hosted in the data center. And then perhaps yet another topology uh, and another set of quality of assurance character or quality of service characteristics that um, supports, I uh, guess, Wi-Fi or Internet browsing. Because what I want to do, after all, is use all of the bandwidth. I want to use it in an intelligent manner, and I want to provide the right level of prioritization and the right level, level of, of application performance to um, my applications. One, one of the other comments I heard at um, at ONUG this past week, the Open Networking Users Group, is that some larger Fortune 100 customers have in excess of 5,000 or even 10,000 different applications running. And the last thing you want to do is give every one of those applications equal opportunity on the wide area network or even in the local area network. There needs to be some intelligence, some software intelligence in how those applications are, are delivered. Yeah, and I think the thing was, I mean, you could do this before with MPLS class of service and things, but you were limited. <laughs> And they weren't dynamic, right? So as you add more applications, if you're able to automatically map that in, that's that's much better than having to try and do things manually. And so that's really the big difference here between what you're doing, what Silverpix doing on the SD WAN side, and what you might have been doing before, uh, you know, with the class service or uh, you know, or, or even you know, different frame segments or whatever. It just it, the, the the it's a because it's done through software. It, it's much more dynamic as, than what it was. Yes, terrific. So let me talk about some of the, the, the zombies of broadband that we've got to, uh, to get rid of to be able to use the uh, broadband and, and all of the uh, connections that are available to us in, in, a, in a, 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 a business uh, way. And th those two zombies in particular are security and reliability. Um, so so the, the first thing that we do when we set up uh, tunnels across an SD-WAN is we encrypt all of the data that's going through those tunnels. It's 256-bit AES encryption. That's encryp encryption at the highest levels that are, is used by the, you know, the NSA and the, the CIA in the United States and other equivalent intelligence agencies around the world. Um, it's as strong as a encryption that, that uh, is is pretty much unhackable with today's technology. But the third is reliability, and I'm going to spend a little more time on, on reliability. So um, the what, what Silverpeak does in its, its implementation is, is each overlay is a set of bonded tunnels. And what a bonded tunnel is, is utilization of one, two, three, even more of the different transport services, and then using those services to transfer tr to transport traffic, data traffic, and uh, potentially error correction traffic. And uh, unlike some of the alternative solutions in the marketplace, we're actually able to share or load share the traffic across 
multiple tunnels. So I might have one tunnel that is, as I've depicted here in this picture, that's on top of MPLS and broadband internet. And I may send my um, mission critical traffic along that tunnel because I've got that you know, bulletproof reliability of MPLS, but I've also got the uh, incredible bandwidth that I get from a broadband internet connection at a, at a lower cost per bit. And then um, I might have yet another tunnel that's just using uh, broadband internet and LTE for less critical um, uh, browsing traffic or, or, or data transfer traffic. Um, again, we, we send traffic across all of the transports within a particular tunnel. And if one of the transports were to fail, and this slide is going to build a little bit, I'll, I'll fail over to the alternative um, t uh, transports that are within that tunnel. And if for some reason the entire uh, tunnel were to fail, or, or rather the all of the underlying transport services within the tunnel were to fail, the technology will also then fail over to an alternate tunnel to get across the Internet. So not only are you getting the increased bandwidth by sharing all of the underlying transport services and load sharing the traffic across them, I'm also increasing application availability and reliability uh, by being able to move traffic um, very intelligently and very quickly. And in fact, our failover times are uh, sub-second, and rarely, if ever, is there even an application interruption. You wouldn't even hear a glitch on a telephone call or see a glitch within a, a video uh, conferencing call. Another way we make the Internet uh, more reliable, and even MPLS. By the way, MPLS still suffers something like a tenth of a percent packet loss on average. And whenever there's packet loss with a TCP IP application, that means the retransmission of data potentially and the uh, going back, re reverting back to a small window size, which then uh, slows down application performance. So what Silverpeak has implemented is two different um, packet uh, condition or path conditioning capabilities, a forward error correction where we can periodically send error correction packets in addition to data packets that allow us to reconstruct anything that might get dropped at the far end. And because we're using uh, different WAN transports simultaneously to carry the same stream of packets, or to carry the same session, if you will, um, the paths may be different. The latencies may be different on those services. So I also need a mechanism to make sure packets get put back in the right sequence at the far end so data is not corrupted or a video conference doesn't uh, you know, have glitches and things like that. So there's both a forward error correction capability and a packet order care correction capability within the Silver Peak implementation that's uh, quite unique within the industry that allows you to make broadband internet per perform as well as a leased line services, and in some cases better than a leased line service like MPLS. And it will even correct uh, errors that happen on MPLS and make MPLS perform better or make the application perform better than it would on MPLS just as it comes straight from the service uh, provider. I think one of the important things there is often I hear companies um, you know, they upgrade their networks, and then they have the same problems, right? And so all they have is a network that's more expensive but still performs the same, even though they're spending much more money on bandwidth. And this really comes down to just the inherent challenge with, with, with TCP IP. And it's, I, I don't want to demean the protocol. Obviously, it's been around a long time. But when the Internet was first designed, it was built for guaranteed performance, and nobody really thought that we'd be doing, like, business things and mission-critical things over – you know the over WANs like we do today, so it's just it's time for for that protocol to be evolved as well. Exactly. So uh, they say that a magician, you know, never never uh, gives away his his tricks or gives away the secrets of his tricks. But uh, with Silver Peak, we actually do uh, give away some of the secrets of of what we're able to do. This secret sauce of uh, error correction and, and packet order correction. And this screen that you're seeing here is, is something we call Live View. And what Live View allows us to look at is the, the throughput, the packet loss, the latency, and the jitter of the underlying transports. And that's, this is three different um, uh, parameters that we're looking at here. Um, and, and the actual uh, performance of the application. So the, the traces that are fully highlighted in green are the application overlay. And what you see with the orange are 
brownout conditions that are occurring, whether it's packet loss or whether it's latency or whether it's jitter, on the underlying transports. And in this particular example, I've got an MPLS connection and I've got an internet connection, and we're seeing brownouts on both. But what we're seeing is that how the forward error correction and the packet order correction capabilities running across that bonded tunnel of internet and MPLS is able to deliver the application without experiencing any kind of a brownout condition or any kind of an interruption. So what path conditioning and tunnel bonding do is it assures not only application availability, but very, very high performance of that application even during a brownout of a transport or, uh, in the extreme case, an outage of the transport. And with our system, you're able to program in the uh, parameters that you want to define a brownout. For example, for your VoIP and video conferencing, you might want to have a jitter uh, parameter of maybe 50 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds that defines a brownout. But for uh, the overlay that's supporting file transfers, you don't care so much about jitter. Uh, you may not even care so much about latency, so you can provide a higher level of, of uh, a brownout transition and what that, uh, or, or threshold. And what that allows you to do is uh, take the best advantage or the optimal advantage of that um, lower cost but very high bandwidth broadband connection that's supporting that um, overlay. So you're really optimize. You're able to optimize the network performance or cost, right? Where before you just you, you really can only do one. Yeah, that that's exactly right. And 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 the the this uh, this magical trick that we perform, and it's not really magic. It's actually technology. Uh, but that's exactly what it does. It allows you to 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 get the best of performance and the best of cost. Uh, optimization, and and that that's clearly one of the the, the main drivers of, of SD WAN and why it's growing at, at double if not triple digits. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on the next uh, slide. We're talking about quality of of service here. Uh, the point of this slide is that we can also perform rate limiting or traffic shaping, uh, where even if I have say a hundred megabits of a broadband connection. Uh, for my guest Wi-Fi traffic, I may only want to allocate 10 megabits no matter what. And so what I'm able to do is define a maximum bandwidth or a rate limit for each of the different overlays that I define uh, that are supporting different classes of applications. And again, what this allows me to do is deliver applications with the performance that they need um, and make sure that lesser priority or lower priority applications are not uh, impairing the performance of a higher uh, priority application. So let me talk a little bit about WAN optimization. So as I mentioned at the, at the beginning of, of my part of this session, is there is some misconceptions that you know now that I can provide inexpensive broadband even to remote branch offices just supporting a, a, a few people, I don't need WAN optimization anymore. And um, for, for in, in some cases, that may very well be true. However, there are still certain types of applications that are very chatty, as Zayas mentioned at the beginning of the call, TCP applications where there's a lot of acknowledgement traffic going back and forth, and you've got to wait for those acknowledgements to come back. Um, the latency between New York and London is still 120 milliseconds round trip, whether I have a megabit per second or 10 gigabits per second of wide area networking bandwidth. And if I have to wait for those acknowledgements, um, I, the performance of that application is going to suffer. And so the ability to, to do application acceleration, which, which is one of the, the tenets of, or one of the, the benefits of, of uh, WAN optimization or latency mitigation, uh, clearly has that benefit. The other uh, benefit of WAN optimization is data reduction. And if I've got large files that I need to transfer for backup applications or recovery applications, um, what I want to do is minimize that, that data that I'm transporting across the WAN, not because I necessarily need to um, you know, have that bandwidth available for other applications, but I want to perform that function faster. I want to get that backup done more quickly, or I want to come back online uh, with a recovery uh, from a snapshot or, or, or a uh, recovery uh, backup application uh, to get my business back online faster. And so data reduction in form of compression or data deduplication uh, is still needed. Um, and what SD-WANs have done is they, they've changed the consumption model for WAN optimization. WAN optimization with Silverpeak, um, which is the heritage of the company, the company was founded more than a decade ago on WAN optimization technology, is to create a fully integrated solution where WAN optimization is uh, deployed where it's needed and when it's needed 
um, on a, a drip by drip basis, if you will. You don't have to have WAN optimization at every single branch. You don't have to have the same amount of WAN optimization everywhere, and you don't have to support it on every single application. You can use it where and when when you need it. So that's that's what I think we're seeing with SD WAN is it's not going to eliminate WAN optimization, but it's going to change the way WAN optimization is uh, consumed. And the next slide is really just a, a graphical. Um, uh, uh, a depiction of, of that goblin of, of time. Uh, no one's yet figured out how to uh, get better or do better than the speed of light, but we've created techniques to kind of fool the speed of light. And this is TCP proxy or, or whatever um, you want to call it that is the ability to accelerate TCP applications by uh, proxying the endpoints uh, at the endpoints and, and overcome that latency uh, limitation that we have. And I believe that is the last of my slides. I'll hand it over to Zayas for some concluding comments, and then we will take some uh, some questions. And I'll remind everybody that you can type questions in um, in the the question box on your screen. Zayas? Yeah, yeah. I just th um, thanks. Uh, just to sum this up, right? I, these are all things you've heard before. The uh, the main theme is that the, the digital transformation is causing business to, to find new ways. Of working, and those that can are going to be the winners, and those that can't are going to be the losers. The business is only as agile as the weakest link, and that's the network today, and arguably security. And I think the software-defined WAN can bring a lot of the same levels of agility and flexibility that you have with containers and virtualization and things like that, the computing stack, the network. So, it is really the right network for this era of business. And so, stop running your business on a legacy network and run it on a network that's really designed. Uh, for the digital era. And uh, I think the SD-WAN can get rid of a number of network issues and application performance problems and really let your business hum. So that's the end of our presentation, and we're certainly looking forward to the to some Q&A. Louise, do we have any questions from the audience? Yes. We do. Um, once again, everyone, if you um, have the, uh, the opportunity, please go ahead and utilize the um, button at the top of your uh, screen that, uh, that asks a question. But we do have a number of questions that have come in. So first of all, I'd like to start off with um, one for Zeus. Um, this comes in saying, uh, question, can I run real-time applications over an SD-WAN? Um, let, me, let me start, and then Zayas, you, you can sure. uh, chime in. You know, one of the things that, that, that we saw in, in the presentation was our ability to use um, multiple sources of, of WAN transport and to use them simultaneously uh, to get the bandwidth benefits of uh, broadband per, you know, at, at, at the right cost point and to get the reliability and the performance of MPLS and to use them uh, together. And with the forward error correction capabilities and the ability to program in or define uh, brownout thresholds, you can very, very reliably uh, perform those voice and video conferencing type applications that are real-time applications and do it very, very reliably to minimize and even eliminate um, retransmissions of data and get the performance and uh, reliability of packet delivery that those kinds of applications require. Yeah, I, I think um, this requires doing the proper uh, pre-work in a way, right? So you can't, if you were simply just to take your current network and replace all your expensive private IP connections with broadband, uh, you would probably struggle to run real-time traffic. However, if you go the next step to an SD-WAN and have the proper optimization technologies, then of course you can, right? So a lot of this depends on, you know, uh, so the answer is yes, you can, but it, it is dependent on doing the proper pre-work and making sure you have the right optimization tools. Great. Thank you. Th th thanks, guys, for answering those qu that question. Another one here. Um, don't SD-WANs make the network more complicated? Uh, I'll start with that. Um, All right. Yeah, you know, I, I, uh, 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 with a traditional network, there was only one way to really deploy it. And so in some ways, it's, um, it's efficiency. <laughs> 
um, or its simplicity was built into the fact that it was highly inefficient. It's a little bit like when we had traditional voice systems. You had a phone, a cable, and a PBX, and that was kind of the only way you could architect it. Now, you've, of course, there's a lot more options. So as you shift to an SD-WAN, you're going to have the ability to architect that network any way you want. And so does that make things more complicated? Well, sure, on paper it does because there's more choices. And any time you have two choices, then that's more complicated than having one choice, right? So, But, again, so this comes down to if you do the proper pre-work and you understand what your traffic patterns are, you understand what your applications are, and you should know these things anyways, right, then I would, I would argue – uh, you'll have a smoother deployment. And the big tipping point, though, I think, and this is where automation needs to be embraced, is that um, if you automate a lot of those day-to-day -day manual tasks, then, in fact, you're going to have a network that's simpler to manage. So, Yeah, and, and, and clearly moves, adds, and changes, which have, have been the bane of you know, very um, rigid um, network infrastructures or, or rigidly defined network infrastructures are far easier. So once I've defined the different policies and the different overlays to support the different classes of traffic that I want on the wide area, if I'm adding branches because my business is expanding or if I uh, make an acquisition, uh, because of the, the centralized orchestration model of SD-WAN and the zero-touch provisioning of the virtual or physical appliances at the branches, it's really a matter of just plugging in new appliances at the branch offices. They'll call home and authenticate themselves. A, a configuration, the, the SD-WAN configuration will download automatically from the orchestrator to those appliances, and boom, those new branches are up and running on the WAN without having to go in and program ACLs on the devices that are in, in those new branch offices. Or if I make a change, I do it once at the orchestrator, and then I push out that change to all of the appliances, whether it's 10 or whether it's 100 or whether it's 1,000 appliances in the SD-WAN. So uh, clearly, um, that's a far simpler administrative task um, than we've been used to. Great, thank you. Um, another one that's come in um, is about security. Um, should I be concerned about the security of uh, deploying an SD-WAN? Uh, well, in fact, I think you should. Uh, I think you should always be concerned about security, whatever type of network you're running. Uh, obviously, when you have more direct connections to the cloud and things like that, um, there are uh, more security concerns. And again, this comes down to thinking about the overall big picture and archite architecture, that if you were simply to lift your old network out and drop kind of a broadband network in place and keep everything else exactly the same, then I would argue you'd be less secure. However, SD-WAN does let you do things like segmentation, allows you to, allow, to implement virtual security tools and things that will indeed make you more secure. So it's not like th this isn't a – black-white situation where I was doing something and I'll do something else and it's an exact replica. There's a lot of other things that you have to do along with it, but then when you get to that end goal, it, it in fact is a much better situation than what you had. Okay, thanks. Uh, we have another one that's come in. Um, says, to take advantage of an SD-WAN, does it require multiple ISP connections at each location? Well, let, me, let me start on that. and. Um, you know, you can implement an SD-WAN with a single uh, connection, whether it's Internet or whether it's LTE or whether the, it's uh, MPLS. However, you don't get all of the, the benefits that I, I described, uh, especially in terms of high availability. Um, one of the things that SD-WAN can do is allow you to get very, very high performance, very, very high uh, reliability and very high availability, and I'm separating reliability and availability. Reliability meaning application reliability and getting the packet from point A to pack, point B reliability and availability meaning the WAN is up or, or versus down. Uh, and I can get very, very high levels of, of performance availability and reliability with two broadband connections and not necessarily have to have the reliability of MPLS anymore. Um, just because I, I, ha I have two connections and I've got higher performance and I've got the um, tunnel bonding and error correction technologies that Silver Peak provides, so you can um, get that just from uh, broadband Internet. Not all customers are going to do that. Many customers will continue to have maybe one MPLS connection instead of two, and they'll augment that with, with a, a lower cost, higher speed broadband connection. Uh, but you certainly can implement an SD-WAN uh, with a single uh, connection, but typically 
typically uh, customers will deploy multiple. Thanks, Derek. Yeah, and, uh, and so the answer to that is you don't have to, but you can, right? Yeah. Where and you can integrate it easily. Where with legacy WANs, if you wanted to use multiple ISPs, the work in doing that would be a lot greater. So again, this comes down to a lot more flexibility. Right. A um, couple more questions. Um, how disruptive is this to, de to deploy? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Let me start on that. Um, some of the implementations uh, that you'll hear about in the industry talk about a router replacement strategy where you replace your existing router with a new SD-WAN appliance that you know, doesn't need to route because it's got this overlay technology and it does dynamic path selection or it's got routing built in. Um, Silver Peak's implementation is a pure overlay. It can operate in band, it can operate out of band, it's fully compatible with existing um, uh, routers that you likely have at branch offices and at headquarters offices, so it can overlay on top of that. If it's a greenfield branch, we do support BGP routing in our appliances, so you can potentially forego the need to put in a router at, at a new branch. But what we wanted to do at Silver Peak is, is create a very, very flexible deployment option that allows you to migrate to SD-WAN at your own pace. It does not have to be uh, you know, a, a knife edge cut over on, on one night um, where every uh, branch office in the organization now has to be operating on an SD-WAN. You can do it you know, a site at a time or 10 sites at a time or a few handfuls of sites at a time at your own pace. And when you add a new organization you can, or uh, through acquisition or whatever, you can bring that um, into the WAN at a, at a very, very um, graceful uh, pace. So my, in my opinion, uh, it, it is uh, disruptive, but um, it's a whole lot less disruptive than having a network that takes four months to make simple changes to. How's that? <laughs> nice answer. like All that right. one. Okay, um, we're running out of time here, so we've got one final question, and um, any other questions we will take offline and respond individually. Um, I already have one optimization, so why would I migrate to another product that has it already built in? Yeah, so, so um, WAN optimization, um, as, as we saw during the presentation, is, is an important component for delivering you know, the highest levels of application performance and getting the most optimal use out of, out of bandwidth uh, resources. Um, but adding an SD-WAN capability to WAN optimi optimization uh, delivers additional levels of availability and flexibility uh, in the model. And again, the, the Silver Peak model is it, it's, it's a single solution that's evolved uh, over time um, and uh, c comes out of our 10-year um, heritage of providing high-performance WAN solutions to the industry. Um, we're consistently rated you know, the, the, the tops in, in, in WAN technologies. Um, and we've continued to evolve that, that technology to support SD-WAN uh, technologies uh, and do so in a single solution uh, in contrast to some of the other solutions out there that um, have to either overlay on top of a, a WAN optimization or uh, chain it you know, from, from, different, um, vendor, uh, from different vendors. Okay. All right, so I don't have anything else to add to that, so that's, uh, that, that was good. So, so, Zayas, I have one more question for you. Um, what are you going to be for Halloween? Uh, a, a, uh, I don't know, maybe a, a network engineer. <laughs> <laughs> that means I'll be busy for uh, four days making changes. So. <laughs> or performance. What if you have an SD-WAN? Yeah. Well. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, be a legacy I'll be a legacy engineer then. There we go. So, All right. so unfortunately, we're, we're out of time. Um, look, if you didn't get your answer, uh, your any question answered during the presentation, we will follow up with you via email. So, on behalf of Silver Peak, uh, Zayas, Derek, and myself, I'd like to thank you for attending. Um, again, the on-demand presentation will be available on our website and uh, at www.silverpeak-com and. Um, forward slash webinars within the next 24 hours. Um, we also will be mailing out uh, to you a copy of the recorded presentation. Uh, thank you again, and we hope to see you soon on one of our upcoming webinars. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.